All right, so here's the deal. You just booked a studio session, and if you're anything like me, you want to kill as many birds with one stone as possible, okay? You want to have the most productive studio session that you possibly can have. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that inside this video. Let's jump right into it. Number one, you need to either bring the beat with you on a flash drive or email the beat to the engineer ahead of time. You know, sometimes it could take 10, 15 minutes of just maybe looking up the beat online if it's on YouTube, downloading it, or you wait till you show up to the studio and you're like, oh yeah, I got it on my phone. What's your email? And then you try to send it and then maybe the file's too big or you got a WAV file. So now you got to try to figure out how to upload it to Google Drive or Dropbox and then transfer it to the engineer. Do all this ahead of time. Make sure you send the beat to the engineer or what always works is just bring the beat with you on a flash drive. That'll save you a lot of time. Number two is go over the song before you come to the studio. Right. A lot of time is wasted when there's artists in the booth and they're actually saying the song out loud. And then I hear them say like, man, I got either too many words, not enough words, or this wasn't how I thought it was going to be when I was writing it. And so I always ask them when you were writing it, were you actually rapping the song out loud? And they're like, no, I was just writing it. And so I always recommend whenever you're writing a song, rap it out loud as you write it down, because your delivery is more important than your lyrics, right? Having melody, being on beat, having not too many syllables, just enough syllables, that's all got to be on point. So make sure you go over your song several times and then also with figuring out your flow or your voice or your tone for it. You know, you can figure this out before you even show up to the studio because time is money, right? So on your own time for free, if I was you, I would be rapping the song out loud and saying it different ways to figure out, okay, that's the way I want to say it. And now you're ready to go. You're just like, I just need to show up and drop it. I'm ready to go. I have it near memorized. And that's what you want ideally for showing up to record a song. All right, then number three, I'm going to walk you through how to get some more bang for your buck, right? To get more content out of your session. So quick, easy, number three is getting some pictures. You can simply ask the engineer to, you know, here's my phone, we do me a favor, we get some pictures of me, right? Pose, whatever, go in the booth, get some pictures of you on the microphone, sit on the couch, if you smoke, get a shot of you smoking, just a picture or pictures showing that you're in the studio because this is what your fans need. Your fans need to be notified that you're in the studio. It's documenting your journey. You were just in the studio, this involves your music music career, you want to document this. That's the point of creating content on social media is documenting your journey and sharing this with your audience. I was in the studio today. Prove it. Here's pictures of me in the studio, new music on the way. That excites them. If you wanted to get advanced with this, if you know a friend that's a photographer, invite them to come along with the studio, have them get some shots of you. So that way you get those off guard candid shot where we can act like you're standing next to me and we're having a conversation. We're pointing at the computer screen and boom, boom, boom. You get shots like that too. Number four is getting some video clips of your session. So if you could only get one video clip, I would recommend set the phone somewhere, hand it to the engineer, ask them to hold it and kind of do this while they're recording you and then get you performing the song in the studio, right? So that clip right there could potentially be your next big piece of content to blow the song up. Your performance, your energy, all that stuff is selling the song. So you don't want to just be nonchalant, just rapping it like this. You got to have the energy. Love or hate Takashi 6 9 when he used to do this and also Bobby Shmurda, they had like viral videos that popped off and it was just them previewing their new song in the studio and they were just so excited they had so much energy that even if the song wasn't that hard anyone watching it was like yo their music just makes me hype why just like watching them and how hyped they are that like travels beyond them to us right it vibrations, frequency, something like that. All right, so we got the in-studio performance video. Now with the in-studio, the picture videos, I had mentioned you could reach out to like a photographer friend if you know. I don't think you really need to reach out to a videographer friend for the in-studio performance because I think the candid cell phone quality, like it's live, like, oh, we just happened to capture this on camera, the off guard, like that's the vibe you're going for with the in-studio performance, which is good because that doesn't cost you any money. Number five would be to make sure you get stories, right? The, the 24 hour lifespan things, get stories showing that you're going to the studio. You could do updates throughout the day, like ask me questions on Instagram. And then once you're at the studio, after you've recorded your song and you're waiting for it to get mixed, maybe that's when you sit down and you answer the questions, but you're answering the questions from the studio, right? Perception is the new reality with social media. And you want to present yourself as a serious next level music artist. You're building, you're in, plus you're actually at a professional recording studio. 
So it's an easy way for you to get content and you're engaging with your audience and you're doing it from the studio. So you, you have that background, you're in the actual studio and then it gets people excited and hyped too because the people that would ask you questions are fans of yours and then now your fans of yours see that you're in the studio and it's a win-win. Besides answering questions, you could just do stories throughout the day like, hey guys, I'm gonna bring you guys along with me to the studio tonight and then when you're pulling up to the studio, maybe another story like just got to the studio, introduce them to other characters, right? So let's say you had a session with me, you might come up to me with the phone and be like, I wanna introduce you guys, this is my studio engineer, this is Crackalack, we're at Crack House Recording Studio, we're in Lansing, Michigan, like introduce yourself, Crack, like tell my audience how long have you been doing this and I answer a few questions, right? And it's include your audience, it makes them feel like they're here with you, right? They're welcome. And this is all simple things that you can do in a minute on your phone. So just create little short stories and include your audience with the studio session, right? Like make them feel like, oh, I went to the studio with you, I seen what it looked like, I heard the song that you made and I'm excited and you updated me here's context and you updated us next is going live from the studio so it's similar to how I was saying do a Q&A and you answer the questions from the studio it's just another way for you to build that perception show people that you're in a nice professional studio you're going live you're engaging with your audience you're answering some questions you're saying what's up to different people you're letting them preview the music Maybe while the engineer is mixing a song and they hear little parts of it and everyone's like, yo, what are you up to? I'm at the studio right now working on a new song. It's called this. It's going to be out this day. This also allows you to give more context to the song because people can hear more about what the song was about or what inspired you to write the song, to make the song. And so as you're live, you're just talking, you're engaging with them. You're letting them know, man, when I wrote the song, this is how I was feeling. If you ever felt like this and you're being relatable, you're being authentic, you're being vulnerable, you're letting people know that they're like you right you have things in common so now they can look up to you they can be closer to you they can be more connected more bonded that's how you establish connection when building an audience another thing you can do is vlog so vlogging your session is kind of similar to with doing stories throughout your day like show the audience what it's like to come to the studio with you so that's just, it could just be all cell phone videos and you're just getting clips throughout the day. But instead at the very end, you edit them all together into one video and then you upload that as content. So instead of the stories being 24 hours, if you put it into a vlog and you actually post it like as a permanent post content like that, now it just lives there forever. I like vlogging because it shows people the inside process. Like, you know, when we listen to songs on the radio, they're already there. But wouldn't it be cool if we could go to that artist's YouTube channel and we could see like, oh, this was the day that they made that song this is what she woke up and did that day and you know this was her response or his or her response maybe you know you're sharing your reaction with it like dang man I, I was late to the studio this day or I got 30 minutes late and I only had an hour left of my session and I had to record the song as fast as possible and then that ends up being a hit song and then when you're getting interviewed years from now and you're telling people like oh I, I made that song 20 minutes or 30 minutes and we hear this type of stuff all the time but there's no proof of any of it so I'm all about documenting what I do and it kills multiple birds because one is there for documenting two is there for proof three it's there for serving a purpose is content right coming up with content can be difficult but if you turn our lives and what we do into content creation then it makes it easy so i'm all about simplifying the process and making it as easy as possible and the more easy it is then the more likely we are to actually do it so we all know we need to be creating content and the more hard and difficult it is the less likely we are to be consistent with it and keep it up so what our job should be is to take the important tasks like content creation and simplify it. Just make it easier. Then we can actually do it and stay consistent with it and grow. All right, you guys. Well, if you're ever in the Lansing, Michigan area and you want to book a studio session here at Crack House Recording Studio, I have a link in the description very soon or maybe by now, by the time you're watching this, we'll offer online mixing and mastering to people all over the world. Link to that will be in the description. And for a limited amount of time, I offer one-on-one -on -one consultations. So link to those will be in the description. I have beats for sale, I have the book me to shoot your music video, etc. All the links will always be in the description. Drop a comment and let me know if me and you were talking one-on-one -on -one right now, what specific thing could I help you with that I could maybe answer in a future video to help you and potentially thousands of other people at the same time. Do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time. We out.